Last year, a line of clothing was released called the Over My Dead Body collection. The UK fashion company List touted this line as clothing people could wear if they wanted to look stylish even when six feet under. The clothes included lingerie, trendy pieces for women and men, and was advertised by models wearing the clothes in coffins. Nearly indistinguishable from clothes the average fashionable person would wear on a daily basis, there was some controversy as to whether the line was really aimed at future corpses or just an edgy marketing stunt. After all, List had previously been involved in a similar hoax marketing campaign involving the sale of posh puppies as accessories. Okay, yeah, had to be a stunt, but it does bring up the question of what people want to be buried in. While us green burial pro-decay advocates may not want to be buried in a polyester garment that will linger in the earth long after our bodies have decomposed, the plus side of people taking control of their burial garb is that they're thinking about their death and talking about it with their loved ones. Which is a death positive win. First, let's take a peek into the closet of yesterday's dead and see what they did to make it work. That's my Tim Gunn. <laughs> I've done him before, haven't I? Mm. Tell me you like my impressions. As early as the 1600s, American women were sewing their own burial clothes. In many cases, when a woman was sewing her own wedding dress or having it made, she was fully aware that this would also be her burial garb. Married in and buried in. Around the same time a woman would be creating her wedding dress, she'd also probably be thinking about the pitter-patter of little feet and death. Because as the saying goes, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby in the baby carriage, and the fairly high likelihood that the mother will die in childbirth. For most early American women, impending birth could also mean impending death, and they prepared appropriately. Shortly before a baby was born, a woman might lay out her burial clothes for her friends and family so they would know what she wanted should the worst occur. There are multiple diary entries from the 1800s of women writing about their upcoming birth of their baby, as well as their chosen burial clothes, because that's what you did. Men and women kept burial clothes under their beds, and records show that many people were buried in clothes constructed decades ahead of time, just in case. By the late 1800s and early 1900s, it became more common for shrouds and burial clothes to be mass-produced by specialized seamstresses in an undertaker's establishment, especially in big cities. Enter the sham burial suit. If a person was buried in their finest clothes, no one could ever wear those clothes again, and they went to waste. But if a seamstress could make a sham burial suit, one that only appeared to be good clothes, then the dead person's actual good clothes could continue to be worn by the living. An undertaker told the Cincinnati Inquirer in 1880, Nobody ever sees the back of them, and half the lid covers them up to the waist, so what's the use of buying a $40 rig or so when you can get one of these for $10, I want to know? Ain't the deceased lost enough without chucking his clothes into, huh? The sham clothes would literally only be part of an outfit. The part visible to mourners would appear to be fine garb, sometimes a copy of the dead person's favorite, but anything hidden from view would just be secured with ties or tucked in under the body. Some burial garments only went to the waist. Sham burial clothes also made it easier for corpses to be dressed for burial by undertakers or family. As you might remember from a previous video, dressing dead bodies is hard. They don't help. In fashionable cities like New York, there were shops and skilled women who created grave clothes for the rich, the poor, and everyone in between. While these were called shrouds, they were really loose-fitting dressing gowns, shirts, or dresses. Running somewhere in the realm of $2.25 on the low end and up to $40 on the high end, shrouds enabled a fair number of women to earn a good living under preferable working conditions. This was due to the fact that most shroud makers could sew dresses, but not all dressmakers knew how to sew shrouds. Women had to begin as apprentices and work their way up. 
In such a shop, all the shrouds were the same size and shape, usually divided by gender, but could be made of black, brown, or white silk, linen, cotton, cashmere, or wool, and could be detailed with pleats, bows, lace, satin, ruches, or raised flosswork flowers. Men could have starched collars with studs, women could have a bosom piece made according to fancy. No matter the flourishes, or lack thereof, shrouds were generally the same design. Large, loose sleeves, billowy throughout the body, and open in the back from top to bottom. The garment would be secured at the neck, and extra material tucked under the corpse for a perfect fit. And while such burial shrouds have fallen out of favor in conventional American burials, there are people who are trying to once again make burial clothes simpler and greener. Order member Pia Interlandi makes Garments for the Grave, a line of clothes that are designed to be as temporary as the flesh. Painstakingly made from biodegradable materials, Pia tested various textiles to see how quickly they decompose. Materials like raw silk, cotton lace, and hemp, her garments resemble the shrouds of a century ago in both their style and in permanence. She currently has one of her pieces on exhibit at the Museum of Modern Art. Order members, we're everywhere. We are legion. So that's just a tiny slice of corpse wear through the ages. Gonna wrap you up in my shroud, in my shroud, all over your corpse, from your head down to your toes. Yeah, my grave clothes puns aren't that great, but I'm sure you'll tell me better ones in the comments. Speaking of clothes, um. have you seen all our new merchandise? Some of it's old merchandise, some of it's new merchandise. You can wear them before you die and after you die. Link below, six feet under. <laughs> that's, that's stupid. Also, since the holidays are upon us, I'm signing books at my local independent bookstore with the name of your choice and then sending them off. So link below, six feet under. No, stop it. Don't you ever say I don't have your holiday shopping covered. Of course, this video is sponsored by, just by, by me and the, my funeral director and this, this stuff that we made and we put them in the little envelopes and we send it to you. This video was made with generous donations from death enthusiasts just like you. Order members, we're everywhere. According to fancy. And that's a death positive win.